Okay, we're back with <laughs> Facebook Live. Sorry about that. We somehow got cut off. That's the beauty of live. <laughs> um, so I think we were talking about um, men. Yes. And um, services subjects. that you're able to have with men. Right. Not a lot of grooms want makeup, but sometimes if he has a cold and he has a little redness around his nose, or if he has a surprise special friend show up that needs a little covering, we're happy to do that. We're happy to send hairstylists to his suite, make his hair make sense. Um, a lot of bald grooms need some anti-shine on their foreheads, happy to do that. And in addition, if we have a same-sex wedding with two grooms and we're doing all of the groomsmaids and special gals and moms, we're happy to touch up one or two grooms or none of them, whatever they want. Right. Yeah, tell me a little bit about same-sex weddings. How do you how do you handle that? SP Beauty is an open and affirming company that supports same-sex marriage. So we love doing same-sex weddings. I've done a lot of same-sex elopements. I've done a lot of same-sex full-scale weddings. If we have a same-sex female wedding and both brides want makeup and hair services, but they want them in separate rooms in the hotel, we have a large enough team to accommodate that. Um, I think that guys should not forget their best gals when two guys are marrying each other. They all have moms, they all have sisters, they all have groomsmaids, some of whom are wearing bridesmaids dresses and we can't forget about them. So we have the team to accommodate it and we love doing it. Everybody wants to look beautiful. Everybody wants to look great. Right, exactly. So, um, so can you give me an idea of how many artists and you bring along with you? Like, how, what's the ratio? It depends on the timing that we have. I generally service seven, I generally do seven services per artist. So if we exceed seven services, it just takes too long. Sure. So we'll add another artist for an additional fee. Um, and then we'll break it into two chairs. So sometimes we'll have makeup and hair for 10, and that will be four artists. And I'll do the timeline so that we can plug everybody in to certain artists. Okay. Oh, so we have a question um, from Hi. Kathy. And she's, Hi, Kathy. <laughs> she's saying, um, how, how has wedding makeup changed over the years? She loved the makeup that you did on her 13 years ago. <laughs> her wedding was fun. It was in Jamaica, so we had a great time. Um, Kathy's wedding day was so hot. I was melting, she was melting, but I kept her makeup on by touching it up. But that was before we had the primers that we have today. So now I've got a primer for everything. And um, when Kathy does her renewal vows, hopefully in another exotic location, I will be there with my anti-shine primer. I'll be there with oil-free airbrush, which we didn't have back in the day. And then I'll be there with um, anti-shine spray, which we didn't have back in the day. Also, 13 years ago, I bet her photographer was using film. Now, everybody's using HD digital cameras. So, film is beautiful, and a lot of photographers are going back to using film, but the cameras, whether they're film or HD, they're so much better. So, the makeup has to be more specific and more clean. Skin has to be really smoothed and evened out, but in a very lightweight manner. So the technology of makeup itself has improved and now we have HD foundation to go with HD cameras, which we didn't have back at Kathy's fabulous Jamaica wedding. <laughs> Where, by the way, I partied my pants off. <laughs> and and uh, Kathy says, yay to anti-shine and oil-free <laughs> airbrush, thank you. Yes, but to that note, I've done weddings in Jamaica, Tulum, Mexico, Arizona, um, Vermont was really sticky too. Right. So we do travel and we are able to accommodate different climates. Which is really important to know yeah. because we get a lot of questions too about that. Um, How, you know, the cakes, yeah. and how, are they gonna melt? Yeah. <laughs> That's um, nerve-wracking. So Heidi is asking, is airbrush makeup better than regular foundation? Heidi, thank you for asking this. I'm glad to put it out there into the Facebook world because I get this question all the time. Airbrush makeup is a technique of putting makeup into a little gun and shooting it out. It's basically the same makeup that I would apply to your face manually. 
Some people prefer the way airbrush looks because it does look airbrushed. Some people prefer not to have an airbrush look. I prefer using airbrush when a client requests it because I'm happy to accommodate requests, but also when a client has damaged skin, rosacea, cystic acne, um, incredible dryness, scarring. In that instance, I can't rub the skin with a brush or a sponge or even my fingers. I have to go over the damaged skin and create a new skin with airbrush and that's why it's an incredibly helpful tool. I also really like it because no bridesmaid or bride will ever walk down the aisle after sitting in my chair with tan lines. No, no, no. No, no, no. Yeah. I get really upset when I see <laughs> tan lines. So I run around with my airbrush gun gunning down tan lines and my assistants are in back of me powdering on top of it and we just make sure that doesn't happen. So airbrush is really cool for that. Well, that's important to know. See, yeah. I would never have thought of that. No tan yeah, lines. Yeah, no tan, no tan line. Lines. Important. And while I'm at it, I just airbrush bronzer all over them. <laughs> so this is, um, someone asked about your eyes and said how beautiful, you, you usually do beautiful eyes and you have beautiful eyes now. So how, how do you achieve that kind of a look? That, oh, yeah. well, whomever that is, thank you mm -hmm. so much. Um, a lot of New York City clients want a very soft, natural look, like an enhanced natural, but with a little, little pop on the eyes. Because our clients are very chic and sophisticated, so they don't want to rock the aisle with a bright red lip. And I understand that. Um, that might be for the rehearsal dinner. But for clients who do want a little extra pop on the eyes, I start with their eye shape, their eye color, and their personality. So some people say they want a little extra pop on the eyes, and that might be, you know, some beautiful loose shimmer mineral powder in a gold. Sometimes it might be like a slight bit of lavender to enhance a brown eye. Or it might be a really stripped back version and just be like a dark, dark eggplant liquid liner that just pulls out like gold flecks in their eyes. So you so, do have a lot of tips and tricks. I have tricks. a lot of tips and tricks, <laughs> which I won't share verbally. But really, it, it just it's the personality, right. the eye shape. It's the environment of the wedding. Is it daytime on a beach? because that's going to be totally different from Saturday night, New York City elegant at the Park Hyatt in December. Right, right, These are, you wanna look yeah. like you fit into the venue. Exactly, you have yeah. to fit into the venue, you have to look like you're one with the dress. Mm -hmm. It really, it's an overall picture that we're going for here. Right, right. And I guess those, as, as you said, pictures also, um, you're gonna have these pictures for years, so it's really an important thing to look. Right, yeah. I, I, I believe that as much as people ask me about trends and tips, I think that bridal makeup should look as organic to the person as it can. Um, in terms of new products and tips, I really like to incorporate that into bridal makeup with great, with new techniques that I'm learning and practicing all the time, and also new products because the makeup companies are making beautiful new technology at a breakneck speed. Mm -hmm. So I buy the latest things if I think that they're going to be really helpful for my clients. But in terms of bridal makeup, it should be as organic to the person and the scene as possible so that when they look back 50 years at their wedding album, they think, wow, I looked really great. Side note, my mom, my parents got married in 1960. Um, they've survived how many years? What is that? What year is it? Yeah. Oh, Lord, 50 that's a plus long, years. 56 <laughs> years of marriage. Yeah. And I look at my mother's wedding pictures and she looks perfect. She's wearing a little bit of lipstick, maybe a little mascara. Wow, that's she great. She got her hair yeah. done that morning. She was 23, but she looks absolutely perfect and she is not embarrassed at all in any way by purple eyeshadow. Yeah, that's in, and that's, in, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's impressive too because they didn't have all that technology back then. Right, <laughs> well, my mom is also a gorgeous woman. Right, that helps. Yeah. <laughs> um, somebody asked a question about eyebrow waxing or um, plucking yes. before the wedding. How far in advance should you really do that? So important to plan this stuff ahead of time. I don't want people to get pain about what am I doing this what am I doing that but there's definitely an order to do this um, 
when you're starting out getting facials, if you want to start a year in advance, if you have that kind of advanced planning, great. If you have a problem that you want to solve on your face, start doing that a year in advance with monthly facials. And then one week before the wedding, no, no closer to the wedding day, I would do just a light glow and go facial. Go see my friend Jamie Carson. Um, don't get any extractions the week of the wedding. Don't do anything wild and crazy. Please don't get a peel. Come on, girls. <laughs> Come on. Be sensible. Um, spray tan. Obviously, I've never done a spray tan look at me. <laughs> but if you want to do that, that's totally fine. We'll still color match you. Spray tans can wear off. So tr do a trial date with your spray tan artist so that you know that you won't have a bodily reaction or skin reaction. Do that, you know, a month before and then spray tan like three days before the wedding. And in terms of waxing, please don't do it the day before the wedding. I beg of you. Why don't you do it three days before the wedding? Waxing, threading, or tweezing. So now we're, we're on this uh, question about, I guess, um, hair. Yeah. <laughs> because a mother of the bride question that came up uh, was what about legs? that will show in short dresses. Do you have any tips for that? Yes. Um, well, thanks, Mom, for writing <laughs> in. I have um, a little Sally Hansen leg spray that I'm happy to use. We do it in the bathroom, on a towel, you hike up your dress, um, and then we, we can either blow dry it dry or you can walk around. Um, you can also do that yourself standing in the shower um, before you put on your robe and get all of your makeup done just so you know that it's going to be dry but we can definitely take care of that for you. Okay, so that's... We do it all the time on models for photo shoots but sometimes we get more intricate with you know color correction on scarring. Right, oh, okay. So um, we, I think we talked about this earlier but some people may have been cut off. So you do do hair, you bring a team of people to Absolutely. do hair. Yeah. Okay, because someone is asking about that if you're if you bring up if people to do hair people can hire our hair artists mm -hmm. totally okay great and we've got great people who are so friendly and warm and really talented here's another question do you do you like to see photos of makeup and makeup and looks that people like you know do you want them to bring totally. photos you encourage totally. that I always have a phone call with clients before we set a trial and meet and I ask them to do a little bit of homework so I suggest that they find a celebrity with their coloring. So I would look at Mila Kunis, <laughs> way younger, way prettier, <laughs> but you know, it's a, it's a guy. Right, post. right. So find a celebrity with your coloring, whose style you like, and look at her red carpet. So if you have a dress with an illusion front and back and you want your hair up, um, and if you have the coloring of Mila Kunis, then you Google Mila Kunis red carpet, loose romantic updo or Mila Kunis smoky eye light lip. Throw everything that's mildly appealing on a Pinterest board and sort it out later. When, they, when people come in for a trial, we like to see their makeup and hair inspiration photos. We discuss it, we deconstruct what they like. They don't have to like the entire picture. They can say, I love those eyes, but I would never wear that lip. Totally fine, we'll extrapolate. Um, but we get the vibe, we get the ideas and then once we deconstruct it, we come up with a game plan. And then, of course, we like to see a picture of the client in her dress. So we can Sure. See so it's important like. to know what the dress yes. is going to look like. The dress like. really informs the look. Mm -hmm. Whether we're doing hair and, you know, it's an illusion front and back, or strapless and there's a lot of real estate to cover, mm -hmm. or if it's, um, it, it's a high neckline with a deep back, it all really informs the look, as does the hair the client actually has on her head. And I think you said earlier that it's important going on that dress that you have the dress before you really do a trial run. Yeah. yeah. Clients can hire us before they buy the dress. Um, if they know they want to secure us a year in advance, it's really fine. Um, but it's important to know what dress they're going to be wearing because it informs the look and informs how they feel about the look. Um, it's just, it's important. It's, yeah. as I said, it's the big picture and we're servicing the big picture. Okay, great. So tell us a little bit about 
false eyelashes? Do people want to know about false eyelashes? Yes. So right now I'm wearing mascara and I curled my lashes with my fabulous Shu Uyamura lash curler that I got in the Tokyo airport. That's my favorite prize from my trip to Asia last year. Um, I do love false lashes. I have two drawers right there filled with false lashes. Some or are for dancers at events when we're making them look like cabaret stars. And some are light little wispy lashes for a bride. So I do love lashes. I love the look of lashes. I love the way they perform because I can glue them onto an eye and they won't come off with tears. Yeah, that was a question. Right. You know, do they, are they are they on? They're you stable. Know, your, your lashes are going to fall yeah. out in the middle of your ceremony. They will not <laughs> flop off. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and we assure that during our last looks, like I schedule in fifteen minutes at the end of every um, getting ready session, just to go over people's faces, make sure their lashes are still attached, make sure there are no seams in their faces. So yeah, we definitely make sure the lashes right. are attached. Some brides opt for just waterproof mascara because they prefer that. Some brides want just a few clusters. Some brides want a strip but something more delicate. And some brides want full on long lashes and that's mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. Some brides like to get lash extensions which are applied in a salon. Right, so that's something you do in advance. That's something you would do two days before the wedding. Don't do it the day before the wedding. We did have a bride whose lash extensionist accidentally dropped a little dab of glue in her eye. It was totally an accident. Sure. But the white of her eye turned red. Oh. And she was panicking. Yeah. So we were putting eye drops in all morning while mm -hmm. I did her makeup, and the redness reduced to just a little red dot. But this is a good reason to get your lashes done two to three days before the wedding. It sounds like really you should do anything a few yeah. days before in case yeah. you need time to Yeah, You can get your manicure the day before the wedding. Please don't get a manicure the day of the wedding. Please don't pull out nail polish in your bridal suite. Just don't. It's asking for trouble. Right. It's like slicing vegetables on the day of your wedding. Right. Don't do don't it. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. So Chill out. You, you have a you have a fan who just is saying I have happy a fan? Glenn <laughs> from he's saying hi Sharon happy hi, New Glenn. Year thank you you too <laughs> so it's your fan <laughs> club yes um what what's the best place to get ready did we talk, did we go over oh, that oh this is such a good question yeah so I love hotel rooms because they remove people from their environment. Um, when people are in their house, their pet is there, they're looking at all their junk that they didn't put away, they're thinking about everything else that they have to do, they're receiving friends. Once you go to a hotel room, you're already packed. You thought about it, you made a list, you packed, you checked it three times, you got to the hotel room, you're in a neutral zone, your pet isn't there, nobody's bothering you, you're not looking at all your stuff and thinking, I should throw that out, why didn't I clean the windowsill? Um, you're in a neutral zone and you're focused. Also, when people do prep in their apartment or in an Airbnb, it's usually an old building in New York City. And old buildings in New York City can't necessarily handle two blow dryers and four curling irons plus an airbrush compressor and extra lights mm -hmm. and the coffee um, maker and everybody plugging in their Right. If you're in, ho in a hotel, you can call engineering if there's a problem. Bingo! <laughs> and trust me, nobody loves to call engineering as much as I do. We also bring circuit breakers, not circuit breakers, but uh, power strips with mm -hmm. us. But hotel rooms are neutral zones. You can call engineering. It's just a cleaner, nicer setting where you can get ready in peace. And if you do book an Airbnb in Manhattan or Brooklyn, please ask about their circuit. Yes, yeah, that's a good tip. Because yeah, you don't want to delay <laughs> right. the getting ready because you don't have any electricity. Exactly. That's a bummer. Yeah, that would be a bummer. Yeah. So, should um, Heidi is asking, uh, should I cover my tattoo on my wedding day? And if so, does a makeup artist do that? And how? Oh, Heidi, that is such a good question. Thank you for writing. Hold on. <laughs> Depends on your tattoo. I had one girlfriend who was getting married in California tell me, Sharon, my mom is like 
really strict mom and one of my bridesmaids has a massive back tattoo and they're wearing strapless dresses, what should I do? And I told her, get her a sweater. Just get her a sweater, <laughs> get her a bolero and then she can take it off after pictures. Mm -hmm. If a bride has a tattoo that embarrasses her or that she's over or that her strict religious mother or grandmother won't like, then yes, tell your makeup artist about that ahead of time. We all do tattoo coverage. Tattoo coverage is the only thing that I will upcharge because it can take up to an hour and it's a lot of work and it's a lot of product that I'm pouring in um, to that tattoo coverage. And what, what do you use for that? Oh my God, if it's a black tattoo, I'll, I'll cover it in a red lip pencil to neutralize the black because the black actually turns blue on the skin. Mm -hmm. I'll cover it in a red lip pencil. I will airbrush it with a neutralizing color first, then I'll airbrush it with a regular color, then I'll set it with powder, then I'll go over it with more airbrush makeup. It's a process that can take a while. So my advice is embrace the tattoo. So love the tattoo. You loved it once, <laughs> love it love again. It again. <laughs> right, right. So. Um, and think about that before you get a tattoo. Don't get a neck tattoo. That's I mean, good do tip. what you, do what you tip. want. <laughs> um, we, we have covered tattoos. I had this adorable bride who I love, love, love was on my website. And she has a religious family, but she and her two beautiful sisters all got their initials tattooed on their left shoulder. And because it was a slightly religious wedding, um, I did take her into a side room so that grandma couldn't see and we did cover the tattoo. Um, right. Her sisters were wearing dresses that covered up everything. Um, they were wearing more modest dresses, but I did cover up the bride's tattoo. It lasted all night. Happy to do it. Okay. But, you know, you right. have to think about the timing. Sure. Yeah. You have to factor it in. Absolutely. Um, let's talk about something that sometimes people are a little concerned or thinking about, hopefully in advance, is the budget. How do you budget for beauty? Mm -hmm. I would ask around, ask around your office, find out what other people paid, um, look all around and see if you can get any information on that, and then call call the favorite makeup artist that you'd like to try and get her, get her prices. Mm -hmm. um, I know that weddings really add up. And I know that there are a lot of options in terms of pricing, especially in New York City. But what you have to consider is that these pictures, these pictures will last forever. And the experience that you have with your vendors is also what you're paying for. You're paying for flowers, you're paying for great photography, you're paying for a makeup artist who's going to make you look great and not stab you in the eye. Right. But you're paying for experience. You're paying for somebody to respond to you right away, to answer all of your questions, to be friendly and warm with you and your entire family. And you have to pay for professionalism. Right. Well, I, I agree with that. And um, especially, I would think, for makeup, I, I don't wear a lot of makeup right. personally. But um, I think that if I was going to be having pictures and people are going to be taking pictures of me all day and these are lasting memories, yeah. that that would be so important. Right. You're paying like, for the application, you're paying for the quality of products that the artist is using on you, and you're paying for her experience. So I've got 20 years experience doing makeup, right. and I have keyed fashion shows, I have done a lot of photo work, I've been with all types of people. So I know how to interact with your family and your friends, I know how to soothe nerves, I know how to get things done on time, and that's, that's priceless. really important. I do put a price to it, but it is priceless. Okay, um, we talked about where to get ready. So we talked about this. I'm just going back over some questions now. Um, oh, how about the, the trial, the, the how, how does that, we, I think we were talking about it and we got mm -hmm. off the subject yeah. a little. Where, do you, how far in advance should you do that? Should you have your veil with you? Should you? Uh, you know, can you make changes after Absolutely. you do it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Good questions. We do trials here in my East Village studio. Um, and I do it here because I've got a lighting set up. We can do makeup and hair at the same time. And again, just like a hotel, it takes people out of their environment so they don't have to worry about anything else. This is a neutral zone. And I have 
a very fully stocked liquor cabinet, <laughs> which I'm happy to share. That's important. <laughs> right. Um, happy to share to put people at ease. I would recommend that people do the trial once they have a dress secured. If they do a trial a year in advance and they have a dress secured and they want to book us, we will schedule the trial and it will be awesome. I would recommend that people do the trial, you know, three months in advance if they have the time. I've done trials the week of the wedding on a client who lives in another city or overseas and she just wants to get her look together but she's hired me and she's confident. But when you wait too long to do the trial, even when you hire somebody initially, you run into scheduling difficulties. You stay late at work, the artist may get sick or have something else come up. Um, you really don't want to run into timing issues. Mm. Now, should you bring your veil? If you, ha if you have a veil, that's great. If not, we'll make it a game day decision. And some people come in for two trials because they do a Pinterest board for me. We discuss it, they like the makeup, and then they change their mind. But mm. they hire me, they like me, but they just want a different makeup look. All right. Okay. And we also do a lot of game day decisions. Right. So some people want to change up their lip look, some people want more lash or less lash. Some people decide to do their hair completely differently. As long as they feel confident in the team, they can make these game day choices. Well, that's a question I had. Do you ever have a, a, a couple who, you know, last minute just changes everything? I haven't had too many no. people like that. We have had emergencies where um, a wedding is canceled due to a blizzard, like last year's blizzard. Oh, right. We showed up, we did the makeup, on everybody and everybody <laughs> looked gorgeous but the mayor shut down the city right, they couldn't I remember get that. Yeah. to the wedding oh my and gosh they, they, they couldn't get from manhattan to brooklyn right. that's a story nobody, for your friends <laughs> yeah, the pictures are gorgeous and the bride was so beautiful mm. she's so beautiful yeah um we did all the makeup they did the photos and then we came back the next day right. did oh. more makeup right. and the wedding went on and they're happily married oh that's nice but we haven't had too many wild changes right people like to check things off their list sure. and i understand that it's a big moment you have it's a circus right you don't want to be saying oh now i want to wear red lipstick yeah, instead I mean, of neutral people, oh, people have totally changed their lip color mm -hmm. on the day of the wedding and i'm really i'm chill i am laid back i am there in the service of the client's happiness right. what about people who i know that different cultures and uh have changes, uh, costume changes, if you mm -hmm. will. So how does, how does that work? Do you redo the makeup? You just touch up? Yeah, it depends on the client. There are a million ways to do a wedding. Um, a lot of South Asian brides do change their outfits from a traditional outfit with um, a very large head covering that covers up the hair and the hairline with um, jewelry. And I love doing South Asian weddings. I love it, love it, love it. Um, and then oftentimes they will change into a Western white wedding dress. Um, they need a very stable bun to hold up that beautiful, heavy embroidered um, veil. And then they'll change. We'll lighten up the makeup a little bit. We might change to a softer look. We may take the hair down or put it in a more beautiful updo because it's visible. Um, and some brides, I did one wedding where she wore four gowns. Oh my goodness. Yes, and we changed her makeup and hair. It was intense. Oh, uh, but a lot of- She's probably changing more than she was at the wedding. I know, I know, but <laughs> she's so gorgeous. Yeah, I'm um, sure. But sometimes a bride will change the dress and we'll stay there. She'll wear a long dress for the ceremony and um, do the first dance. And then she'll change to a short dress for the reception and we'll put her in a ponytail and bright red lip and she'll go dancing. That's great, yeah, that, that sounds like And we fun. can plan those changes ahead of time. Right. So we can test the ponytail to see where she wants it on her head because there are a million ways to do ponytail. Mm -hmm. So everything's really planned out. It's not, you know, you have to understand it's not doing makeup with your friends at your house. It's, it's a professional experience. It, oh, it's a professional experience, mm -hmm. totally. That said, mm -hmm. we're happy to do things on the fly. Right. Right, of course, you're flexible, I'm right. sure you have to be. Yeah. So, okay, and um, let's see. Is there any, th I think the, the last question we have, we're gonna kind of wrap it up, is we're gonna say, if you had one 
tip, trick, or secret that you wanted to share that you feel is, you know, one of the most important things for getting ready for a for a wedding or a big event? Mm -hmm. um, what what would you want someone to take away? I would want. I, I really want people to take it easy. Hire great vendors who you can rely on. Vendors who are amenable and friendly and warm and trust them. Take it easy. Mm -hmm. Sleep eight to ten hours the week before the wedding so that your skin looks nice and tight and so that you're relaxed. Mm -hmm. And then when the day comes, trust your vendors and have fun. Right, you're I think that's, doing it once. that's really Just important. Just have fun. Yeah, to have fun. Yeah. Just yeah. take it easy. I mean, you're with the people you love mm -hmm. and you know, you, you want to look great, but you also, stress isn't a, doesn't, isn't an enhancer, so you want to feel comfortable. Right. And yeah. if you have good vendors who will help you plan the moments that they're involved in, right. and you trust that vendor, then you can hopefully relax. Don't, don't take a lot of valium either. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good tip. <laughs> don't drink too much. I've seen a lot. Don't drink too much. Right. But just take it easy. Yeah. Try to try to relax yeah. and do it on your own. <laughs> so, okay. Well, thank you so much for all these great thank tips you. and ideas, and thank you, we really Stacey. appreciate you telling us the inside deal of getting ready for a wedding. Thank you so um, and we hope we'll jo you'll join us again another time. One person told us that they'd like to see you do a makeup demo. Oh, so maybe be more next specific. time. specific. What kind of demo maybe. would you like? <laughs> Not, they didn't say. They just said okay. they'd like to see you applying some makeup okay. and doing some demos. So maybe we'll do that again another okay, time. Okay, sounds good. And um, thank you everybody for joining us for Facebook yes. Live. Thank you so much. We'll be doing this every Thursday in January and February and possibly into March. We have some great vendors lined up. So thank you very much, Sharon Becker of SP Beauty. Thank you. Bye. Bye.